Good morning. You know, some people have asked me over the years why I say good morning no matter what time of the day it is. Well, in reality, to me, it's the best part of the day, and it's always morning somewhere in the world. And honestly, I started off saying it years ago just to get people's attention. It seemed like we walked by each other so much in this world and never really paid attention to anybody saying anything to us. And but if you go in the evening time by someone and you say good morning, about two steps behind you, they'll turn and say, it's evening. And it's, it's made them stop and think out of, you know, what's going on in their life just to think about something different. So it's just a, 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 a greeting that I use. So good morning to you. I hope this is a blessed day in the Lord. I hope you have your Bibles also because we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 10. Uh, and as we look at that, we're going to talk about uh, us and the glory of, of God. So as you turn in Romans chapter 10, let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that today as we look into your word, that you would open our heart, that you would open our mind and Holy Spirit, that you would teach us the things we need to know about our great God and Father, about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Teach us what we need to know to live this day for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. As we look at Romans chapter 10, let's begin with verse 1. And in verse 1 through 4, we're going to see that our desire glorifies Yahweh. The desire that we have in Him and for Him and His Word glorifies Him. It says in verse 1, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for them is that they may be saved. He's talking about his fellow Jews. For I bear witness, them witness, that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They, they had a love and a zeal and a desire for God, but it wasn't tacked on with the law and the word of God and an understanding of him. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to God's righteousness. You see, they really didn't know the God they claimed. And that's one of the failures of many believers today. Uh, we might be saved, but do we really know the God that we claim? Or are we just living out our lives? It says, for Christ is the end of, of the law of righteousness for everyone who believes. So if we have a desire for God and his righteousness and for our righteousness in Jesus Christ, but we also have a desire for others to be righteous in Jesus Christ, to come to faith, to know him, to accept him as their savior, to repent of their sins. These are the desires that Paul had, and they were great in him. And these desires that he had and he lived day to day glorified his great God. May the desires that he instills in our heart for other people and for himself glorify our great God today. Then in verse 5, we see that our faith glorifies Yahweh. It says, For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandment shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Faith is available today. Uh, salvation is av available today. We just need to come to the point where we decide to believe what God says about our sin, about Jesus Christ, and our need to be saved. He says the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. Uh, God made it so anyone could open the Bible, could read his word, and be saved. 
It says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. You see, it's a heart matter. It's not an action matter. It's not what we do. It's not being baptized. It's not joining the church. It's a matter of heart coming to the point where we see ourselves as sinners before a holy God and we repent or we change and we stop our sinning. It's a heart matter. And, and we believe that Jesus is who he said he was. And we confess this with our mouth. There's no private Christians. There's no private uh, baptisms. There's no private Lord's suppers. There's no private... All this is to proclaim and confess with our mouth and with our lives publicly that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Then in verse 12, our unity as believers glorifies Yahweh. It says, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what time period you live in, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now that doesn't mean we just say, I believe in Jesus Christ, so I'm saved and going to heaven. And we live the life we want to live. This is saying that we call upon the Lord in our helplessness and our sin and we ask him to save us out of it through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and we put our faith and our life into that belief and we live accordingly. It's not the words we just roll out of our mouths. It, remember, it's a heart issue. It's a life change. And this unity in, in spirit of brothers and believers in Jesus Christ and sisters and believers in Jesus Christ, as we are bound together by his Holy Spirit, this unity glorifies Yahweh. Then in verse 14, we begin to see the proclamation of the gospel glorifies Yahweh. It says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching or proclaiming the word? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. You see, we have been sent into all the world to share and proclaim the gospel. In all of our world, in our neighborhoods, up and down our streets, do they know we're Christians? Do they know what we really believe? Or they, they, they just know that we're good people and we live on the same street as them? Do the people at the stores that we, we regularly meet, do they know that we are believers in Jesus Christ? It says that, that we are to be sent, that they might hear. It says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what, has heard, what he heard from us? So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Not everybody that we share our faith with will believe. But that doesn't get us out from under the requirement and the call of God upon our lives to share our faith. So our, our proclamation, our sharing of the gospel glorifies Yahweh. We need to share our faith and leave the results up to him. And then in verse 18, it says, But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. You see the response, our response to the gospel, to his calling on our life glorifies Yahweh. But I asked, did not Israel understand? First, Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. He's talking about the Gentiles here. He's talking about you and me who believe in Jesus Christ who aren't Jews. He says, the Jews are going to be jealous of y'all because you believed and they didn't. Then I say, Isaiah is so bold to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hand to a disobedient and contrary people. You see, 
when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, and even as Gentiles or Jews, all people, when we confess our belief, our proclamation, our lives glorify Yahweh. I hope and pray that your life today glorifies Yahweh because that's the reason you're living today is to glorify him, to honor him, and to praise him with all of your life and being. Be blessed today as you glorify our great God, our awesome God, in Jesus' name.